So Jason, what is your one sentence review of Bullet Train? Thomas the Tank Engine is never wrong. <laughs> Absolutely correct. My one sentence review is this is the best Netflix anime that Netflix will ever have of all time. Thank God it was not on Netflix. <laughs> Ladybug is an unlucky assassin who's determined to do his job peacefully after one too many gigs have gone off the rails. Ha 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 ha. Fate, however, <laughs> may have other plans as his latest mission puts him on a collision course with a lethal adversaries from around the globe, all with connected yet conflicted objectives on the world's fastest train. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a summary of a bullet train in theaters right now. Like I said before, if you have joined us, you know what we're about to do next. If you have not, me and Jason are going to proceed to give you a one sentence review of what we think or thought or summing up the movie. So, Jason, what is your one sentence review of Bullet Train? Thomas the Tank Engine is never wrong. <laughs> Absolutely correct. My <laughs> one sentence review is this is the best Netflix anime that Netflix will ever have of all time. Thank God it was not on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> the best thing so, that Netflix ever produced. <laughs> right. That's not, not on even Netflix. on Netflix. <laughs> uh, before we jump right into our review, let's take a second for our ad. I'm wearing a In Your Face Art shirt, inyourfaceart.com. Now I have some bad news, guys, or some good news, but how you want to look at it. He is shutting down his website starting August the 31st. August the 31st is the last time you can buy these delicious, wonderful, colorful shirts. I'm wearing the Blue Squad, Squad shirt right now. I got Vegeta. That's Sub Zero up here. Um, but How's... yes, August 31st, he's shutting down to revamp and remodel his store and business structure. Oh. So, yes, he <laughs> made it. How's this for... good news? Where's where the good news of this? Well, yeah, the good news is going to come back with some more heat. The bad news is that if you don't get this heat that he already got, it may not make it to the new store. So, <laughs> in your face, art.com, rock with the boy. He's a good artist, he's a good buddy. And uh, he make like I said, the shirts are dope. Every time I go out with these shirts, somebody always says, "Oh man, I like your shirt." Every not, no matter where I go, I just bought an Afro Samurai one that Jason saw what this weekend. Everywhere I go, mm -hmm. hey man, I like that shirt. Uh, I had a Red Squad one that had Mario and the Knuckles and a couple other people. So yes, you'll be stylish. You'll look good. Also, it's not just a cotton shirt; it's that kind of mesh, kind of feeling workout it's shirt. Breathable. So it actually, yeah, feels comfortable, <laughs> nice and loose. For a big body like me that sweat a lot, I feel good in it. But anyway, inyourfaceart.com, guys. Go ahead. Make sure you go ahead and check that out and uh, get you some. And then, as always, we do push. We got our nerd focus. And uh, we'll have the link that is in the description of this video. So you can go get you a case, get you a taste. Tell us what you think. You got the calorie-free or sugar-free. And they have the regular version. So it's all good there. So thank you all for participating to our corporate sellout model. And now, Jason, what do you think of Bullet Train? <laughs> Bullet Train. Oh man, what a fun movie. Uh yeah. This is these are the kind of movies that I kind of like. It's it's it tries to be clever, but it's not really all that clever. It's there's not really like you're going to figure out. I mean, I wouldn't say you're going to figure out what's going on, but you're going to notice that there's obviously something going on behind the, behind the scenes and how all these characters are connected together. But uh, yeah, you know anything with Brad Pitt in it. Brad Pitt's is going to be the Brad Pittiest Brad Pitt of all Brad Pitts, <laughs> and like you, you can't, they, there's you can't go wrong with Brad Pitt, especially when he he's having fun, he's enjoying himself. It's always going to be a good time. Uh, my boy Brian Tyree Henry, man, that kid is a star. I know he's not a he's a grown man. He's not a child. He's he's a grown man. But him <laughs> paper boy, and Aaron, that paper boy. Yeah, paper boy. <laughs> him and Ailey Terry Jackson is Tangerine Lemon. Like I remember, I'm sitting in the movie theater watching this movie. Uh, they come on. They they get introduced as characters, and I text them. They better not die at the end of this or be mad. Because <laughs> they just like even though uh, this train is you know obviously filled with a bunch of bad, dangerous, murderous people. You know they're still like entertaining and and some of them are you know uh sympathetic uh you know uh, uh particularly lemon uh lemon and tangerine those two characters because they are the twins they are brothers and even though they might do bad things they care for one another and you get to see that throughout the the movie um you know uh what's his name uh logan learman as the son uh 
did not notice him until I looked at the, <laughs> looked at the uh, the cast list, and I'm like, ah, oh, that was that does look like Logan Logan Lerman. Um, everybody in this movie has has did a great job. The one thing that I could say that was uh, two things I could say that probably I want a little bit more of was uh, the uh, a little bit more of the Hornet by Zazie Beats and the Wolf and those two characters that was bad bunny i guess i don't know who that is that a rap singer bad bunny is he a rap, rap? oh you you gonna get us canceled bro <laughs> yeah man one of those, bad bunny the, the, is that, the he's one of those music superstar in the world right now yes one of those guy. rap guys i don't know who that is i don't know who that is yeah is that, the biggest that's, superstar that's, in the world right now that guy does he does the hippity hop that's bad but either way i wish there was more of those two characters uh they kind of got the short shift in a very very stuffed movie uh they pretty much introduced the wolf and then uh he's out of the, the movie i'm not gonna say how but you can probably figure it out it's one of those kind of snatch-esque movies or or your your other you know british gangster comedies where you know all sorts of weird shenanigans are going on with all the sorts of weird storylines and they all come together uh michael shannon uh really great as the white death uh this whole movie is just it's fun it just seems like everybody was having fun um Particularly, uh, Joey King, who is, who plays the prince. Uh, I hate everything she was in. I hate all those kissing booth movies. I think they suck. I was fine with her being in this movie. She was a fine, fine uh, addition to this. She actually, you know, was menacing at points. Uh, pretty clever, and uh, she got what she deserved. So that was great. So yeah, this movie is is fun. It's funny. It's got some good action scenes. A lot of implausible shits happening, but it's you. You get what you want in the ten. It's it's supposed to be silly. It's supposed to just be like a a string of of happenstances to turn out not to be happenstances, just coming together. And it's good. It's a great. It's just a solid film that that was fun to watch. So yeah, that's my 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 review of that. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. This movie is uh something I've kind of wanted in a long time. I mean, this is the epitome of a live action anime, even to the how they have to stop and do everybody's backstory to catch <laughs> yeah. you up to like the moment of where they're at. Like it's so one as an anime fan, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And as one as Jason, who doesn't enjoy anime art so much, he got to take away the art aspect and just get to yeah. the fun parts of anime, which are the fights, the, the, the crappy dialogue and the flashback sequences. So, you know, that everybody has a backstory and history before they got on this train. Look guys, I'm not going to mince any words on this and just let you know, you have to buy into the goofiness. If you mm-hmm. do not buy into the goofiness, it does not work. And you go, well, Jason, what do you mean buy into the goofiness? It's a lot of moments in here that you're going to be like, there's no way somebody could do that. And I'm going to say, you're right. <laughs> but if you can let that ride and just enjoy it, it is a fun time. It is probably one of the funnest times I've had in the theater in a very long time. The cameos, like he, he mentioned some of the cameos already, but it's a lot more cameos that are awesome, well-placed, but then it's just fun. And th- what this movie more made me miss, it made me miss, or oh, I wish that we could either clone or reverse time for Jackie Chan. Cause this oh, would have yeah. been a great vehicle for Jackie Chan to be in because even Brad Kitt's character had the kind of Jackie Chan action style, like hit stuff and his hand would hurt and, he couldn't figure out what everybody's trying to freaking kill him. And like, you know, it <laughs> and he was, was trying not to kill people. He was trying <laughs> right, really, right. really hard not to hurt anybody. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, exactly. Like, take you should take the gun. No, nah, I think <laughs> I'm gonna leave it. No, you should take the gun. So, but yeah, it's very, very fun and very goofy. And when I say it feels like anime besides the action, even that anime trope of the reluctant hero, if you want to call anybody a hero in this movie, uh, only, I think only real hero in this movie is Scorpion which I can't think of Homeboy's name, but anytime it's a Japanese guy that needs to be played, Homeboy does oh. it. Uh, the dude that plays Scorpion in the last Mortal Kombat. He's a beast. Hi- Hiro- um, Hiroyuki Sanada. Hiroyuki Sanada. Yes. He's probably the only hero, real hero in this whole movie. But besides that, like I said, um, Brad Pitt does the reluctant hero thing where it's like, guys, I just want to just do this mission. Like, just leave me alone. I don't even know who you are. Like, <laughs> but I mean, you can say that. <laughs> Ladybug is not much of a villain because he's just doing. I mean, yes, what he's doing is illegal, obviously, but he's not really there to like all the other people are there to do bad stuff. Where he was, just yeah, like, but he's not a hero. Be, yeah, he's but not he's not really a good. villain. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. he's definitely not a good person. I mean, like he's a good person, but he's not. 
doing good. You're right. Um, he's a bad person that got reformed into a yes. decent human being. To a, to so, a somewhat decent human being. So shout he's out better, to his therapist because they did a good he's job. better than that. that dude, Mr. Carver, whatever. It's like. Right, right. Uh, Jason kind of hit it on the, the, the characters, man. Uh, Quicksilver steals the whole show. Not not Ralph Boner. I mean, real age <laughs> Avengers 2, Quicksilver. Uh, he steals the show, man. Like, Every scene he in is he's chewing up scenery. Then you're right. David Tyree is great in it. Paperboy about that. Paperboy, he holds his own. But it, I feel like Quicksilver was just on another level of just, just chaos. And both of them used very, I would say Quicksilver used very little words to display his badassery, where David Tyree was definitely like the talker of the two. But when it came down to being physical, he was very physical. Um but also, this real shining star of this whole movie is the water bottle. And when you see the movie, you'll know why. So <laughs> yes. shout out to the water bottle. is probably they the even... character of this whole movie. <laughs> they even uh, do a, a flashback of the water bottle as well and see how it got yeah, to where yeah. it needed to be. That water and bottle so, came in clutch. <laughs> yeah, and Jason kind of mentioned a lot of stuff. So that's why I don't want to go too deep into some of this stuff. But storyline-wise, guys, so... This reminds me of, I don't know if everybody recalls, it was an era in Hollywood when Tarantino had just did, and, uh, and Robert uh, Rodriguez had just did, like, Dust Till Dawn, and then El Mariachi, and then Desperado kind of came out after that, and then Pulp Fiction kind of came. And then everybody in Hollywood scrambled to get, like, those kind of movies made. It has that kind of storyline set up, like a Tarantino Rodriguez kind of like, this is happening independently, this is happening independently, but as it keeps going, they get closer and closer together once it gets to the end. I usually hate those things because I feel like the best people to do it are the ones who do it. Uh, the and only one I can think of that was done well was like Smoking Aces, but the rest oh, of I them always Smoking like... Aces. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's the one I think it was done well as an imitation of those two guys. This one probably Fallen right in is my second favorite like imitation of that kind of style where it works out very well. So the storyline is kind of shallow and just convenient. But again, we're talking about guys trying to fight on a bullet train. Everything yeah. is going to be shallow and convenient. So <laughs> this again, is not King Lear, everybody. <laughs> right. Right. Again, got to have buy-in. If you got buy-in, you can roll with it. And then same thing but the action. The action is frantic. I feel like the, the actors in this took this very serious and really went through a lot of the fight choreography because – one thing you can notice in action films where you can see where they really did the choreography, the camera just will sit and watch it rather mm -hmm. than a lot of times movies, they'll have the cuts and the edits they to kind of blend in. This. Yeah. Right, right. This one had a lot of resting moments that you could just see what's going on and clearly see that it was the actors, you know, doing these moves right there. So I thought that was really important for a movie like this that would technically have very tight surroundings they did very well to make each cart feel a little different, but then the fight scenes in these carts could either feel very claustrophobic or very open and, and by how the, the, the fight was played out. So I thought that was a very articulate way for them to do the action scene in here. Um, yeah, man, I just had fun with it, man. And I just, uh, just a nice little fun Brad Pitt romp here, man. I, I don't have anything I, really bad to say. It's just only getting bad to say is that if you, you can't buy into the premise, you're gonna hate this movie. If you can buy in, I feel you'll love like, it. I feel like Brad Pitt, Bri Bri Brian Tyree Henry, uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson, even Joey King, they did this these things so effortlessly charming that you can't help but to buy into the silliness. Like, I've, especially with Brad Pitt's character, you kind of like you're kind of rooting for him. He's just so so nice and so so welcome, like a breath of a fresh a breath of fresh air in in this in this movie that you're just like yeah I'll I'll, I'll go along on this journey with you even though this a lot of this stuff is implausible and I don't understand how this all came back to this one thing but that's fine it's fine you 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 sold it to me you know so right I, the, the the performance in here is are, are really really good to to let you you know suspend your disbelief and all the the shenanigans that are happening in this movie uh so what do you give uh bullet train I'm gonna give it a solid four out of five yeah four out of five I'm right there with you, man. I can't complain about it. Four out of five. I loved it. Thought it was fun. Can't wait to watch this on repeat views and laugh at some of the silliness that I might have missed. All right. Well, with that being said, guys, it is some people's worst part of the show, but to me, it's usually my favorite. It's when we get to leave you guys and go away. 
and disappear for a whole week and then reappear next week like nothing ever changed. This is the end of this show, guys. Thank you all, as always, for listening to Head Cannon Circus. Please remember to like, share, subscribe. Follow us on all places, Head Cannon Circus. That's YouTube, Facebook, um, Twitter, everywhere, just anywhere, everywhere. We're just going to make it all work. Follow us individually on Twitter um, at, at Rise Novemberist, and we're on Instagram as well. So just, you know, support us. We'll be here. We'll be there. We'll be everywhere. We're going to kind of like I keep saying, we're revamping some things to make some synergy so it's easier to find us. But then also, we're going to do, we got a couple of special flares coming up in the next couple of weeks. But um, hopefully, you guys enjoy this because we enjoy doing it. And again, thank you all for watching. Jason, any final words? Uh, are we going to do uh, bodies, bodies, bodies this is coming up? Bodies, oh, bodies, you bodies. know we are yeah, doing bodies, so bodies, bodies. That's bodies. coming out this week. So, y'all be prepared for that. So, uh, but also, uh, always be kind, be considerate, and uh, please tip your servers and bartenders at twenty percent, if not more, if you can afford it. Um, Jaren doesn't serve tables anymore, so if you just see him on the street, give him one, one, two, the old heave ho. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, thank you all for listening. We will see you all next week. Look, the only dream master I respect is uh, Frederick.